Welcome to our tremendous leadership friends and family. Today, I am so excited because we are about to release one of our series of booklets in the Tremendous Edge, our number four. And I have the author and the individual that the booklet is about, the tremendous Mitzi Perdue and the marvelous Mark Victor Hansen. Welcome to you both. Delighted to be with you. Thank you for having us. Absolutely thrilled to be here. I just, I can't believe it. I'll try and stay calm, calmer. If, if, you know, that's all a relative word in the tremendous sphere of things. Uh, but for the listeners out there, Mark knew my father. Mark spoke with my father. Mark moved millions of dollars with my father. And I've always known Mark, uh, but we weren't really connected since my dad immigrated to heaven. But a couple years ago when the pandemic hit, I started a podcast. And I thought, I'm going to reach out to Mark, right? The ask. And I reached out to Mark, connected with him. He not only came right on the podcast, right at the beginning, but he connected me with like a hundred other people, at least one of them was Mitzi Perdue. And so I got to connect with Mitzi right when Spark was coming out. And we went to New York City in October in the midst of when the world was falling apart, we were coming together and it was such a beautiful thing. And then Mitzi wrote our latest, many of you have already got this in the Life Changing Classic series on Frank Perdue. Mitzi and Frank were married. Yes, that's him, Frank Perdue, the chicken man. And she wrote a beautiful book called The Frank Perdue Way, Simple Step super success. And then coming full circle, Mitzi and Mark were talking and Mitzi asked if she could write a tremendous edge, which is really the contemporary wisdom about the leaders that are still living on Mark Victor Hansen. And it kind of went from there. So Mitzi, can you tell me about when you first connected with Mark? And I know you talk about it in the opening of Mark Victor Hansen's Recipes for Success. Well, in theory, we shouldn't even have met because you know, my circle is so far removed from his, but here's how it happened. I'm a public speaker. I talk about family businesses and I was in Dubai and there was this guy in the audience who you know, just seemed really nice and smart and fun. I didn't know him before. And he said, you know, you've got to meet a friend of mine. I just know you're going to like him. And I said, sure, who? Mark Victor Hansen. And he arranged a phone call. So I met Mark by phone. But initially, I was kind of resistant because, you know, like most of the world, I've read chicken soup books. And I was thinking, you know, the great Mark Hansen, I'm going to be tongue tied. I won't know what to say. I don't want to do this. But uh, my friend Brad Rotter said, well, my new friend Brad Rotter said, no, you got to do it. There, there's a reason I can't tell you what, but got to do it. So there I am on the phone with Mark Victor Hansen himself. And to my absolute astonishment, he's the easiest person to talk with in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's terribly interested in what you're doing. He's kind of wise and kind. And uh, that started a whole series of conversations. The end result of which was, I screwed up my cards and I asked him after he had seen what I'd written on my late husband, I asked him, has anybody ever written a biography of you? And he looked kind of quizzical and he said, no. And I said, what would you think if I did? Because you've already told me you liked what I wrote my late husband. And to my undying joy, he said, yes. So I interviewed 120 people to get just the essence of, of, of Mark Victor Hansen. And that's the book that's coming out. Well, Mitzi, you are an exceptional writer, researcher, and accomplished woman in your own right. And I love, you know, these little booklets for the Tremendous Leadership fans, people love these because they're quick, they're concise, they're gems, they're meaty, read them, mm, and there you go. And you distilled the wisdom of Mark. So what did you, um, what motivated you really to write this book other than you met him, you saw him, but you started pulling from all the different interviews into a biography form. And what, what, what really motivated you to do that? All right, I have, I'm going to confess my age, which you're not supposed to do, but here goes. Uh, I'm 81 and very proud of it. And I thought, I have a purpose in life and it's to increase happiness and decrease misery. And I thought the wisdom that you can get from listening to or hearing Mark Victor Hansen accomplishes my goal in life, which is increasing happiness, decreasing misery. Because the amount of wisdom that that man has, oh, he, people who listen to him, who act on what he has to say are going to have more fulfilling, 
happier, more satisfying lives. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, I wrote it because of my life purpose. I love it. Well, in biographies, you guys know my father's libraries, it's probably 80% of our biographies, because that's how you hear and share from the greats. And I love that. And Mitzi, who should read this book? Who do you think would be the ideal audience for this? Oh, let me count the ways. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I would start with anybody who's ever read any of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series, because I think it's really interesting to see who's behind the book. You know, what are his ideas? What are his core beliefs? What, what does he wish for you with him speaking as opposed to the stories in the books? So I thought, you know, as a very public figure, it might be interesting to anybody who's even heard of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series to see just nuggets of wisdom from Mark. Well, and when I read on Frank, and we have another one coming out on Buckminster Fuller, and when I read about Mark, you guys know out there, when you read these great lives, it's unbelievable to see the ups, the downs, the highs, the lows, the I'm in, the I'm outs, and Mark is no, uh, is the same as, as all of us. You know, it wasn't all successful. There was great success and setbacks, and I thank you, Mitzi, for sharing that, because I can remember running to Mike, my husband, saying, look at this, Mark, too. He's just one of us, you know? Know? And I love that you really threaded through which each of the, um, and, and you, you space out the different uh, main milestones in Mark's life throughout his life, who we met at different ages when he was young, before high school, when he was in college, when he was moving on to different things, when he was uh, cutting his sales teeth and, and going on and all this library and, and the future. And I love that at each aspect, you really pull the, the distillation. But Mark, I'm going to go to you now too. I was just shocked every time, no matter what, life threw you a curveball. You were just like, okay, I'm down, but I'm going to find a way. Like you were told no many times in life. Okay. You, you, I, I love to think about your, your, your bike and having to earn the money for that. And uh, you just went and said, okay. And not only did you say, okay, but you went then and you asked other people, you made it up in your own mind, but then you went out and you asked the other people in your circle, how do I get there? Are you with me? What do we need to learn? What do we need to do? Who do we need to connect with? And I just thought that was absolutely brilliant for the readers. They're going to be able to see here is the recipe for success, just like making chicken soup follow these steps and you got that. So Mark, I, I would love for you to just expound a little bit on, were you always so tremendous in the making? Wow. Uh, I, I love listening to both of you. I am humbled and thankful to be here because I looked it up on our favorite Google this morning and only one in a hundred million people have a biography. So thank you, Mitzi. Thank you, Tracy, <laughs> and Dr. Major Tracy for making this happen. Um, I'm nine years old. My dad is, uh, was born in Denmark, as mom was, and, and uh, came here, had a little bakery, thought the kids, meaning my four brothers and I, should all go to Denmark, see what it's like, and live there for a short time, which I saw socialism and saw that's not what I want. But I did get addicted to little handlebar racing bicycles, and I wanted one. And not knowing that my dad didn't make much money, you don't make any money at five cents a roll in a bakery, even if you own it. So it just didn't, you know... It, I wanted this bicycle that was gonna ride a wheel in Sheffield Steel. I had it next to the wall, just like when we did chicken soup, we had a picture saying we're number one bestseller before I became it 59 times in a row, right? So it just, it sort of wakes up your imagination because your mind is visual. I didn't know any of this, but I intuitively knew it. So, and, you know, cause you're unconsciously incompetent and consciously incompetent and consciously competent and unconsciously competent. And I'm in the high level of that to use Maslow's hierarchy. Anyhow, Nine years old, I'm desperate to have this bicycle. I read a Boy Scout Life magazine that said you could sell on consignment. I looked it up in the Webster. I said, hey, I can afford that. Go out to all my neighbors because my mother was a great saleswoman. I said, I'm earning my own bicycle. Would you like to invest in one box Christmas card or two? I just kept going because I thought this is unstoppable. Boy, I made $376. Now, that made me the number one greeting card salesman in America. Later on, I became the top licensing guy in the book business. Uh, just because I read two books on, on how Spielberg and George Lucas licensed. I said, I'm going to license books. No one's ever done it. I'll do it. <clears throat> and that same greeting card company came back to me 40 years later. And we sold 897,000 boxes of Christmas cards at grocery stores in one year. So it's amazing how if you suck it in, tough it out, and don't get stuck in the no. And the word we teach in our my current bestseller is... Uh, that I wrote with my beautiful, beloved, brilliant wife, Ask the Bridge from Your Dreams and Destiny. We say, hey, look, 
All you got to do is ask to get the business. But when they say no, just go N E X T next, and just keep going. And then the one other thing I need to teach here, I've meditated on this before we got on. And if I'm talking too fast, I'm just excited, ladies and gentlemen, because I think the world of these two ladies. Anyhow, um, when you read Emerson's essay on compensation, which her daddy uh, Charles Tremendous Jones and I went over a couple of times, the first line is every act is its own reward. What that means is when somebody says no to you today and you make 10, tele, 10 calls in whatever business you're in, if that's the number, and you get 10 no's, you will get 10 yeses over time because every act is its own reward. And it's at metaphysically, because the top of physics is metaphysics, thinking, imagination, self-realization, and God, it's a little hard to believe and, and comprehend, but that's the way universe works when you're thinking positive, talking positive, living positive, and reading every one of the 80% of everything comes out of the, the tremendous library is, is biographical and autobiographical. And I've read, I'm one of the few people other than Tracy and her daddy who read every one of them along with Mitzi. I love that. And I love that you talked about, you know, don't get stuck in the know. And you sharing that as a young child, uh, you know, read up. And so for young people reading this book, because they're, they're basic principles, what you do as a child, when you develop that mental toughness and resiliency as a nine-year-old, you build on that. And, and look, then you became, then you signed that contract with, you know, what, decades later for the greeting cards? Who would have thought that as a little boy just wanting that bike and not taking... That's unbelievable. And that's so encouraging for kids to realize, you know what, the sooner you learn to start pushing through, uh, the more that's, you don't know when that's going to keep paying, paying forward and paying forward. And, and I love that. I also love that M Mitzi chat captured all the different areas of your life, the spiritual with Reverend Ike, um, the relationship with Crystal. I mean, the professional, the business, the finding what is the best and purest. You talked about how you were trying to be a Buckminster, mini Buckminster Fuller, a mini Bucky, and that didn't work out. And finding your true self. So I love that really it's the whole congruent mark. It's not just, well, you know, I sold all these books and, I, and th this was it, but she really covers all aspects of your life. And, and that's how you live a tremendous life in all areas. Yeah. The goal here is to be comprehensively successful and go for your destiny. Destinies, I'm going to put a plural, and then you got an ultimate destiny. The spiritual thing you brought up is every one of us was coded at birth before we were born with a God soul destiny. And I think I'm living mine. I think Mitzi's living hers. And I think you're, you're living yours. The three of us have had this little chat before. But the bottom line for me is I'm here to be a, a, a communicator, you know, speaker. I'm here to be a, a writer, hopefully a great and inspiring writer. And then a business person that does honest, ethical, moral, uplifting business that'll make the world work. And, and I'm teaching everyone henceforward. And the reason you got to read this biography is I want to inspire everyone to find the entrepreneur in him or her because an entrepreneur finds a problem, and now we've got 8 billion of us alive, so there's 8 billion problems at least, fixes it, cashes it, it scales it, and it makes a vast profit. And that's available to everybody, and, and everybody can do it. And Mitzi and I, and you just got a letter from Summers White who said, this is the best, and, and he's been in the business 87 years. Uh, sorry, he's 87, but he's been in the business for a lot of years. He says, this is the best business book I've ever read, the book that Mitzi has written about me, and I'm I could not be more enchanted and enamored, thankful, thrilled. And I hope all of you end up getting to write, have a biography written because you got to go do something important, meaningful, impactful. And my goal was to talk to people that care or write to people that care about things that matter that would make a life changing, impactful, transformative difference that was inevitable and unique. All right. And that is all in here. And then I love, Mitzi, that you pulled on Mark's ethics, because in Frank Perdue, you talk about the ethical will at the end. And I love that all great leaders, it's not just about them. You know, God gives not God, God doesn't give us to us, but God gives it through us. So everything you get, you're channeling out and you're being a good steward. And that's one, one of the great things. And you have always, Mark, can you talk at the end, Mitzi captured this about what you want to do with the library 1.0, 2.0 and 3.0? Can you just touch on that? Oh, gosh, I'd love to. Well, first of all, I think, you know, if you, let's do the negative part first. Every despot, whether it was Hitler, whether it was Stalin, whether it was Mao, whether it was Mussolini, 
and and now Putin, what are those first thing they do? They wreck, they burn all the books. I mean, you've all seen it in all the, the movies about World War II and World War I, even Kaiser did. So the point is, if that's what they do, and, and I believe what Plato said and what I agree to, which is stories, whoever controls the stories controls the future in the world. I want to write stories that are uplifting, impactful, insightful, helpful. And yeah, I've sold a half billion books, but what I, my goal is always to sell a billion, which is one of the reasons I got turned on 144 times. I'm, I'm clear that now that when, if I was in New York and reading that at a publisher, I go, this guy's Looney Tunes. Nobody's ever sold a billion books. The Bible sold a billion, but actually 3 billion. But the, the point is, I am now helping people do that. And what we're saying is, look, Library One is our dear hero, a guy, a guy who conquered what he thought was the world, trained by Plato, trained, Socrates trained Plato, Plato, Aristotle, Aristotle, Alexander the Great, Alexander the Great conquers the world, he's 28, which is a kid, and you go, holy cow, what did he do, and he built Alexandria, the greatest library, the repository of wisdom, insight, technology, and it was all done on papyrus scrolls, right, and, and uh, Mitzi and I went over it, I think, were there 4,000 or 40,000 scrolls, Mitzi, whatever the number is, a lot. Yeah, so the, this is a brilliance of all times. And unfortunately, the Romans came in and, and as despots burned it down, right? Yay. <laughs> Anyhow, the second guy who did it is, is a, a guy I'm very scholarly in and, and went to his homes here in, in Scotland, Andrew Carnegie, the wee Scotsman, who only had a third grade education, but wanted everybody to have it. So he had the free American library system, built libraries here. Um, Mitzi could probably give the exact number off the top of my head. I've read different numbers at different times, but thousands of libraries. How many libraries, Mitzi? Um, I, somewhere around 1,400, and the exact number exists, but I didn't memorize it. So what I'm saying is, look, let's go to library 3.0, and I want to lead the charge, and we're going to make sure that all the books that, that we've got are, are obviously text, and they're going to go into every new form and there's a lot of new forms coming out the tesla's coming out with a new phone that's going to transcend apple but then we got to go into audio and you say well how far can we go in audio well i'm a leading edge technology guy because i think you're either leading edge cutting edge dull edge or trailing edge and leading edge guy we just had a guy come to mitzi and i and say hey wait a second we have a company now that can take your voice take 20 hours of your voice and we can do anything in a book and take the PDF and turn it into a book without you having to go in the studio for two days. I thought, that's cool. What else? He said, we could take your voice and do it, or James Earl Jones's voice, or Julie Andrews' voice, any of the voices that you love, and, and turn out the book. But we can also do it in the same voice in Hindi Urdu. We can do it in Swahili. We can do it in Russian. And, and what, remember, my goal is, look, 4 billion of us on the planet are literate, 4 billion are illiterate, meaning they can't read past the second grade level. Well, and we got people graduating in California who can't do that, which in high school, that's not okay with me. That's tragic, but that's bad leadership, right? So the point is, I want to take the leadership edge and say, hey, wait a second, let's get this so everybody can listen, because we now know that everybody that listens to one of my audio books, and I've written 318 books, 1.8% of them go out and buy the hardball book after they've listened to it, paid for it, because they want it, and then they highlight it, and then they keep it. Yes. And, you know, so my stuff is going to have a longevity, I think, I assume, of one of my heroes, Mark Twain, right? Samuel Clemens, of course. But the point is, is that we're saying with Library 3.0, we'll be able to go to video. We're going to be able to go to Metaverse. All these things are, are at, the, at the bleeding, leading edge and we're at the most exciting times in history if you're awake we're at the most terrible times of all of the news the only input you get is on the media which is predominantly 99 percent negatory which is what caused me to go bankrupt in 1974 mm -hmm. or three whenever that was and then you know luckily that was my best worst experience and i've come back and i want everyone to know that some people that are listening are hanging out by their fingernails and that's why i love the way you started this tracy is that every one of the biographies says, and let me just do George Washington Carver. I love Dr. Carver a great deal, but Carver goes down to a nothing university inspired by another book you got, Booker T. Washington, and there's dirt floors. Now this is a first black PhD in America, graduating in Iowa, invited to help out his people, and there's nothing going on in Tuskegee, Alabama. And I've been there twice, taking my family there. I think all of us should take our kids and grandkids to great libraries like that. He's got the second statue at the Museum of the Bible, which is wonderful. I got good pictures with uh, George Washington Carver's great statue there. In any case, uh, with my wife and I, the point is, is that Carver took that 
and he took lemon and turned it into lemonade. He first did crop rotation, then he did uh, uh, plants called legumes, which pull the nitrogen out so they could regrow because the boll weevil didn't kill the cotton. The cotton overexploited made the cotton weak so the boll weevil could eat it. Hmm. And, and people didn't get it, and Carver figured it out. And he, you, then he had too many peanuts because he got all the black farmers to go peanuts. And the wonderful news is his new law was Carver's law is that supply creates demand, the opposite of what we've been taught in every graduate school business class in the world or undergraduate. And, and suddenly he says, well, I'll just stay up. He talks to God at four o'clock to six o'clock in the morning. And that's all in the biography that you and your dad had put out. And what did he do? He came up with 367 uses for the peanut, everything, including peanut textile, peanut clove, peanut peanut butter, peanut butter. We all know all of them. The point is it's so exciting. Everybody needs to get addicted to reading. Now I've read 6,000 biographies and autobiographies, but I want everyone to read every one of the ones in the tremendous library. And I want you all to become tremendous. <laughs> <laughs> and now you folks know why this is our next tremendous edge. Mark hit it, hit it again and again. And biographies, the importance of that is, and we have them on Booker T. Washington, and we have them on Andrew Carnegie, and then we have them on Frank Perdue, and now we have it on Mark Victor Hansen. Is that that reading about what other greats have does, that's what ignites. You're not copying, Mark. You're igniting your own creative spirit. And that's done by the influence of other people within you igniting that. So I just thank you both, Mitzi. Thank you for taking the time to do all the legwork again and just distill the greatness and people love the Frank Purdue way too it's so simple and and that's what the greats always do it's just so simple and it's so encouraging and you know God's not a God of confusion follow these simple steps do it with the right motives and and it will it will come to pass so thank you, Mitzi. Thank you, Mark, for lo loaning your life out there and sharing things that probably a lot of people are just going to be like, that Mark Victor Hansen, I had no idea, but man, he's just like <laughs> one of us. And now I can be like one of him. And that's the encouraging part about living a tremendous life. So thank it's you guys so much. Be on with you and with all your <laughs> wonderful people. Oh, you're welcome. And to the tremendous fans out there, this book will keep po keep you posted. Make sure you sign up at Tremendous Leadership. It is at the printers right now. Oh, there's going to be so many copies coming out. Be sure and get your copy when it gets released. We'll have it PDF, EPUB, Mobi, um, physical copies too. Get them for your groups. You know, the more you get, the more, get them packs. Um, get ones on Frank, get ones on everybody. And make sure you get over to Tremendous Leadership. Our website will also have on my Amazon and we will put out the launch date so you can be aware and you can get this book and read Mark Victor Hansen's Recipes for Success. One All more right. time, Tracy, do it. Is it TremendousLeadership.com they got to go to? Absolutely. TremendousLeadership.com. And for you old school folks, if you do remember us as executive books or Tremendous Life books, all roads lead to tremendous leadership. So you just come on over there and pick up these copies, get them to give away and, uh, and cook up your own recipe for success. All right, Mark and Mitzi, I'm so excited. Uh, Mitzi, you take a little break. Uh, but we'll be back in the writing mode before too long, okay? I promise you that. <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you. God bless you. And uh, I'm so looking forward to getting this out to the world. That was exciting. Did, it, I, did I talk too fast? Because there's so much to do in 20 minutes. <laughs>